Ezra chapter 6. <clears throat> and before we get into Ezra chapter 6, I need to read, uh, like you said, we're just doing the chapter studies. We're not going in deep, but Ezra chapter 4, verse 21. Give ye now commandment to cause these men to cease, and that this city be not builded. Unto another commandment shall be given from thee. Now that I have told you, we went through chapter 4. That was of God because had not uh, another commandment been written in, the law under the Jews, since they are captive to uh, the Medes and the Persians, is if he had said, cease, don't do it, the law would have been established there not to do it unto another commandment. That other commandment is found in chapter 6. This is chapter 6, and the other commandment is of God. You know, people complain and gripe about the president, the presidency, and the laws. Well, they don't really read into it. They don't really look into what God said, because maybe God threw something in there for our protection that we're not going to get. Yeah. Then Dyer's the king made a decree. And search was made in the house of the rolls where the treasures were laid up in Babylon. All right, he's going to investigate what they wanted. They asked that, th that this decree be found. Search. They didn't believe it, I don't think. So they're going to make a search. What everyone's probably hoping is they don't find them. And they can tell the Jews to knock it off. And, you know, what the world wants the Jew to do, knock it off. And there was found at Akshmetia, in the palace that's in the province of the Medes, a roll, and therein was written, and there was recorded thus writing. In the first year of Cyrus the king, the same Cyrus the king made a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem. Now this is going to be the building for men. And if you've got a building permit from a city or for a town, there's no one that can stop you. Because you did, you did the application. You did everything you were supposed to. Now look how Cyrus works this thing this out. Considering the house, okay, a house of God, oh, okay, the temple at Jerusalem. Man, he narrows it down. Where are the Jews right now? They're building a house. A house of what? For God, they said. Where are they? In Jerusalem. Let the house be built. The place where they offer the sacrifices. The temple. And let the foundations thereof be strongly laid. That's what they're laying right now. That's what they're doing to work presently as they're reading this. The foundations are being laid. They're getting upset. Remember, they put an urgency. Hurry up, King! They're going. It's like they're going to face you, you know, by the time the letter gets back and forth. And the height thereof three score cubits, and the breadth thereof three score cubits. Wow! He even tells the Jews how to build it. Now, this is sixty cubits by sixty cubits. This is a detailed law. There's something interesting. This is 60 by 60 cubits white, width and height. Solomon's temple was 60 cubits by 20 cubits by 30 cubits. This temple under Darius that he commands is 30 cubits higher than Solomon's, cubit, uh, Solomon's temple. Scripture with scripture. With three rows of great stones. And a row of new timber. And let the expenses be given out of the king's house. <laughs> Uh-oh. They didn't want to find that one. Oh, the Jews need money. The Jews need supplies. All right, now it comes out of the king's house. You idiots. What did you just do to our kingdom? 
You said that the Jews build this house will be no tolls, no no taxes, no. Now we just found out that we're supposed to be supporting the work. Thank you very much. You just left them alone, left them build, da -de da 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 Now we found a law that it'd be out of the king's house, the money. Isn't that interesting? I wonder if the Jews were running out of money. I wonder if they're sitting in Jerusalem like, Lord, I, uh, we need a lot more. We, we ain't got the funds. You just wait. Just wait. I'm taking care of that right now. Dyrus says, let the kingdom of the maids and the birds pay for it. And also let the golden and silver vessels of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar took forth out of the temple, which is at Jerusalem, and brought unto Babylon, be restored and brought again unto the temple, which is at Jerusalem. Everyone to his place, place them in the house of God, which has already been carried over. They're waiting to, you know, for the house to be built, to be put in order. But Cyrus says, listen, you just don't take that stuff that belongs to God and bring it over there and bring it to your local pawn shop. And Solomon, I mean, uh, Cyrus doesn't say, all right, you just put it in the temple. He says, you put it where it is to be placed in the house of God. So not only does he give them a building permit, but he tells them, you better follow what your God tells you to do. Now, therefore, Tatnai, governor beyond the river, that would be the Euphrates, Shizbandizai, and your companions, the Afrochites, which are beyond the river, be ye far from thence. He's telling the enemy, get away from them now. Move off, go about your business. You know what Jesus Christ is going to tell the enemies in the world in the last day? Depart from me, all ye cursed, into the lake of fire. Everyone that opposes Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ told Paul on the road to Damascus, why persecuted thou me? Sorry, Paul didn't put Jesus in, Christ, in jail. Paul didn't whip Jesus. Paul did not put Jesus into jail. But Jesus took it personally. When somebody bad mouths you in the name of Jesus Christ, now listen to me. When somebody bad mouths you in the name of Jesus Christ and for his word, let me say that again. When somebody bad mouths you for Jesus Christ and his word, they're not bad mouthing you, they're bad mouthing Christ. You don't need to retaliate. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. You better pray for the people that come up and flip you the finger and cuss you out and try to discourage you because guess what? They've already made an enemy of not you but God. The Bible says that when, when they when they despise the word and yes I'm looking at something right now and I'm thinking about certain people despise the word I got them in mind right now I'm not gonna tell you their names but John 1 1 says that the word was the word is Jesus Christ you know the very salvation states that Jesus says in the book of, in the gospel of John that they that love me will love my words and keep them those that are saved, those that are not saved, they don't love the words. They don't. They don't keep them. Jesus Christ will depart every enemy from them, him that are his. One day the Jew will get the new earth, and they will not have to worry about the United Nuts anymore. They will not have to worry about the Arabians anymore. Everybody around them will be their friends and their lovers. They won't be carrying AK-7s and all that. Let the work of the house of God alone. 
This is the governor saying this. Stop it. Knock it off. Let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews build this house of God in his place. Oh, they searched the law. They found the rule. Okay. The law is on the Jews' side. Leave them alone. Moreover, I make a decree what ye shall do to the elders of these Jews for the building of this house of God. All right, here's another decree. That the king's goods, even of the tribute beyond the river, Euphrates, forthwith expenses be given unto these men that they be not hindered. They're going to pay for that temple. Now, now you just imagine the Jews' enemy now. They stand before the king. Hey, 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 you ain't going to find that role. They find that role. They turn around and tell them, leave them alone. And besides the fact is, we're now going to support them building that temple. What do you think they're thinking right now? What would you think the United Nuts in New York City and the media would say if the President of the United States said, you know what? We're going to send them, our military over Israel. We're going to defend Israel with every last missile we got. You launch one missile into Israel, you're going to find 24 nuclear missiles from a, from a Trident submarine delivered on your doorstep, whoever you are. You insult Israel, you're going to get the best of our SEAL team. You're going to get the best of the Army. You're going to get the best of the, of the Marines. You're going to get the best of the Air Force dropped on your, your land poles. And you better watch out. We'll bite. And if you mess with Israel, we ain't gonna never going to buy your oil again. What do you think the United Nuts and the, the media would do? They got a white man right now standing trial and everything looks like he was innocent. But... Since it's because a decree of people who are not really legal residents of this country. If you go back, let's find their ancestor green cards. Let's find their application to, into this country. Let's find it. As far as I know, in order to be in this country, you had to go through Ellis Island. There's a group of people that didn't go through Ellis Island. They were brought here for work. And now they fill the prisons and they... And that which have need of both, of both young bullocks and rams and lands for the burnt offerings of the God of heaven. Well, not only are they going to pay money to, to supply the house, they're also going to get the animals for sacrifice. They upset the gods of the Jew. The God of the Jews, they know history. That the fact is that these people who are of God have angered God that God has destroyed them because of sin. Because they lack doing what they were supposed to be doing. Now these nations are like, we better get right. You know how you know America is not going to get right? Because that God's judgment has been placed upon this nation, she has turned even further from God. You would think after Hurricane Sandy destroyed the beaches of New Jersey, that we're all ready for the, for the July 4th season. Yeah, man in his power. Yay! I want to preach on your be on your beaches and teach the people about Jesus Christ. No, you can't do that. I don't I, listen. The guy, I, I don't really know who the guy is. I don't know if he's writing his doctor on that. Besides, the fact is, the mayor, whoever it was, said you can't do that on a public beach. I watched that that trial that's going on now in Florida, down south. I watched him call up a guy. He raised his right hand, raised his right hand to swear in, and he didn't lay his hand on a Bible. 
Well, why is it you can't have a Bible in school, you can't have a Bible in a courtroom, but you can give one who's sitting behind jail a Bible? You say, Amen, glory to God. You at least gave them a Bible. Yeah, but you know what they do with the Bible? They roll, they take the pages and they roll them up for cigarettes. I was told that by a warden of a Florida jail. Now, some Bibles make good cigarette paper, the pages thereof. That actually a Bible is a commodity for trading. Didn't know that, did you? So they're, they're going to supply the needs for God. Wheat, salt, wine, and oil. According to the appointment of the priests, which are at Jerusalem. Let it be given them day by day without fail. Why? Because the Jews are concentrating on building the temple. They're not concentrating on growing fields yet. God's work is first. There will come a day when the nation will cut off the check, the food, the supplies. Because you're to go in there and grow your crops, do the harvesting, do the orchards, grow, you know, take care of the animals and husbandry and all that. But right now you can't because you're about God's business. That they may offer sacrifices of sweet saviors unto the God capital G O D of heaven. Look at that. This is a decree made in a Gentile king. Now let me ask you something. Do you believe this king is somehow saved? Well, where does he go when he dies? doesn't go to New Jerusalem as a born-again Christian there's no born-again Christians here he's not going to get the new earth that was promised to Abraham and his seed there's only one other new thing as pronounced in Revelation 21 and 22 he gets the new heavens where NASA and all these people are trying to populate right now those Gentiles that do right are going to get NASA's plans. And what do you do when they have children? You say, well, they're not going to have children because the Bible said they're never given to marriage. They'll be like the angels and all that. It's not what he said to the Gentiles. He wasn't talking to Gentiles. What did God tell uh, tell Adam? Multiply and populate the earth, right? What did God tell Noah? Multiply and populate the earth, right? Those were after two flood-like catastrophic events that happened in the earth. What's the next catastrophic thing that's going to happen to the earth? The earth is going to disappear with the heavens. What do you think God's going to tell those new people? Multiply and replenish the earth. Come in and take the the leaves or the fruit of the tree of life that was been able to give to Adam before he fell. You do know that Adam was told to multiply and reproduce before he fell. He did get that, right? I believe this king is going to be in heaven. I'm gonna. Believe, I believe he's gonna be, maybe, maybe a little bit confused with the scriptures. I know he's gonna be there. <laughs> Probably where NASA hopes to be and never going to make it. What about the heathen in Africa? What about this heathen in Babylonia? Means. What about him? He trusted God.
he believed in God of heaven. And pray for the life of the king and of his sons. Look at that. While well, you're at it, pray for me. Now, he didn't go to no idol. He didn't go to no other religionists. He didn't go to the Baalites. He didn't go to the Astralites. He didn't go to the Baalomites. He didn't go to the false worshippers. He went to the Jews of the God of all, who he believes is the God of the heaven, the creator. He says, pray for me, pray for my sons, and here's all the sacrifices you're going to need. And he's not under the law. But, oh, brother, he provides the stuff for the law. Now, where do you see his person in the future? What group of people does Jesus have to talk with that are like this person here now supporting the Jew? The Gentiles that helped the Jew in the tribulation. You need, you're sick, you need help. Jesus said, I, I can't remember completely how he says it, but he said, you know, you were there when I was sick. Man, Christ has got you in jail. Well, you come and visit, you bring them whatever they need. When I was in jail, you visited me. Lord, when did we do that? We just did that. We're Gentiles. And Jesus said, I'll separate this, the sheep from the goats. The goats are the ones that don't take care of. The sheep are the nations that take care of Israel. Do you know you can never find the scriptures? I know you use it, but Christians are not really called sheep. I think John chapter 10, I think he said, I think he says, let me go there. John chapter 10, I want to be correct on this. I don't want to misquote the Bible. Be like your scholars, but let's. In John chapter 10, he's talking about sheep of Israel. Only a fool would think it's them. Well, he does. Okay, verse 16, he says, other sheep. I believe that's the only place it mentions Christians as sheep. Well, he mentions Gentiles that, that helped the Jews out in the tribulation as sheep. He's obeying God, and he's not even under the law. Abraham was a, was a Gentile before God called him out. And God counted him faithfulness, obeying God and doing what God told him to do before he even became a Jew. What race of, was of Noah? Noah wasn't Jewish. Noah was a Gentile. So you got to look at dispensations. You got to look at parts of time. Where does Noah go when, when, when he's saved? Was he in Abraham's bosom before Abraham was the baby? You know he, he's right with God. The new Jerusalem, we know, are for Christians. See, the new heavens or the new earth. And they come in to take up the tree of life for eternal life. I'm trying to show you. Here's a Gentile. He's doing everything that God wanted him to do. He's doing better than the Jews. And he's seeking God. You think God's going to forsake him? Watch this in verse 11. Also, I have made a decree. Another decree. This guy making decrees after decree. A decree is a law. I'm making a law here. And the, and the law and the decrees of Persia and, and Media, you did not change them. There was no Supreme Court for law. There was no overriding. That whosoever shall alter this word, 
The king's, this is not the word of God, this is the king's word. Let timber be pulled down from his house, pull his house down, be set up, let him be hanged thereon. Oh, who does that sound like? Haman. Uh oh. In other words, pull the timbers down off his house, being set up, set them up. They're set up for a house, take them down, and build and make gallows for his, of, his, of, of the timbers of his house. Home sweet home where hanging out is to be. So, what's the expression when we grew up as kids? <laughs> hanging out. I'm hanging out at home. I'm doing nothing. I'm just hanging out at home. This, this is viewed all to the word, the, the word of the king. Uh oh, what did I just say? The word of the what? The word of the king. And what does happen? Our Bible has to be called the King James Bible. So if you were, if you were to alter King James. Law of the word of God, you should have been hung. We're not done. Let him be hanged thereon, and let his house be made for a dunghill for this. Dunghill. I don't know if I can really say it, but for his testimony of going against the king and his word. Especially against the Jews, let his house, let his occupation be a pile of crap. Worse than a city dome. I can think of another word that being full of something which I can't say. Isn't it funny how all those expressions come from a King James Bible? And it has reference to altering the king's word. Well, you go too far for the King James Bible. All right, what's it say on Jesus' uh, clothes when he comes back on horseback? King of kings. That this is his word in John 1.1. 1, 1. I believe First John says the, uh, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. So when you change the word of the King Jesus Christ, the King James Bible, you are supposed to be full of crap. I say that reverently though. Maybe I carried that verse too far. But. And the God that has caused his name to dwell, there destroy all kings and people. That shall put to their hand to alter and to destroy this house of God, which is at Jerusalem. Now amazing how he writes all kings and people. You know what God's going to do? Found in Ezra chapter 6, verse 12. He's going to destroy the united nuts. You say, I'll go so far to say, well, America loves Israel. But we have the United Nuts that's against Israel and New York City. To stay with the, the plot that we are in from verse 11, but the United Nuts being in America, United States, New York City, well, 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 it's like going to a hardware store buying a brand new toilet you get home and you find crap the previous verse in that brand new toilet okay by allowing the United Nuts to be in New York City we are allowing the world to be against Israel Allowing the media to continue 
and go against Israel is a being against Israel. I don't care what you say. 500 missiles have been flying into Israel. They have been destroying Israel for a week long. Israel launched one missile over. Oh my God, they went and destroyed a hospital and all these people are killed. How oh, dare those Jews? They're so wicked and no, oh my, oh, go on, the United Nations, destroy it. That's what they do. Why can Israel be attacked, but she cannot defend herself? But yet, when the news media does all their little tiny little things, we never hear about it. You know what the news, news, news media declares to be? Declares to be Jesus Christ. Because they're without sin. They don't do anything wrong. At least I've never heard it printed on the front page of the newspaper. So, verse 12 is to any nation and all nations... Any people are against the Jews. The KKK is against the Jewish people. God will destroy the Jewish. Uh, excuse me. God will destroy the KKK for being against the Jewish people. I'm not a big fan, you know, following the cross or anything like that. But anybody that burns the cross. You ask any member, true member of the KKK, and they'll tell you they're against the Jews. And probably assume, I don't know, but they'll probably be happy to curse the Jews right in front of you. What does it say in Genesis 12? Therefore, the right race, white race. What is the white race? In God's eyes, we were heathen and Gentiles. Remember, remember, what, remember what Jesus called that woman that was, that was a Gentile? You dog. A dog's an unclean animal. To alter to destroy this house of God, which is at Jerusalem. So let me ask you a question. You ready for this one? You ready? Or should I just keep on reading? Who destroyed that temple that they're talking about presently? The Romans. The Romans destroyed that temple in 70 AD under Titus. The temple that the Jews worshipped more than Jesus. Can you find a true Roman today? That's a prophecy. I, Darius, have made a decree. Let it be done with speed. God's speed. Then Tatnai, governor of this side of the river, she's a Banzanzai. I hope I don't say that name. And their companions according to that which Darius the king had, had sent, so they did speedily. <laughs> and they got out of they got out of dodge. And the elders of the Jews built it and they prospered. Second Chronicles twenty twenty. Prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. Read their books. This is during the time that they told them. Stop building. They started building. And they built it and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel. And according to the commandment of Cyrus and Darius and Artaxerxes, kings of Persia. Look at that. And God requires out of, two, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, it shall be established. So he got Cyrus, he got Darius, and Artaxerxes. The sign, seal, and deliver that temple being built. Now, how important is that? Who walks in that temple? 
Jesus Christ. How many times is he going in and out of that temple? But yet that temple is more important than God himself. And this house was finished on the third day of the month Adar, which is the sixth year of the reign of Darius the king. You think you can date that? You think you can give it a month, day, and a year? You already were. You want to give me a month, day, and year of Jesus Christ's birth? But this is the temple that Jesus walks in. And we know when it was finished. Which is the sixth year of the reign of Darius the king. And the children of Israel, the priests and the Levites, and remember, all priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. And the rest of the children of captivity kept the dedication of the house of God with joy. And offered at the dedication of the house of God a hundred bullocks, two hundred rams, four hundred lambs, and a sin, for a sin offering, and a for, for Let me try verse 17 again. And offering at the dedication of the house of God a hundred bullocks, two hundred rams, four hundred lambs, and for a sin offering for all Israel, twelve he goats according to the number of tribes of Israel. Compare that to the Second Chronicles 7 at the dedication of Solomon. Remember how many animals he was? There wasn't even enough priests, there weren't even enough altars to handle what Solomon offered. And they set the priests in their divisions, and the Levites in their courses for the service of God, which is, which is at Jerusalem, as is written in the book of Moses. So they obey the word. And the children of the captivity kept the Passover upon the fourteenth day of the first month, for the priests and Levites were purified together. All of them were pure and kept the Passover for the children, killed the Passover for the children of the captivity, and for their brethren the priests, and for themselves. Well, there was a Passover that we read that they had to celebrate a month later. Even then, they were still sacrificing the priests, getting them right, uh, sanctifying the priests. I mean, they weren't sacrificing the priests. Cleansing them up, getting everything they were supposed to be. Here, everything is done at the right time. And approximately 519 years, 520 years. Guess what happened? On the eighth day, Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb, and his fleece was white as snow. She brought that baby in the eighth day and to circumcise him and called his name what? Jesus. How do you know? We have two witnesses out of the mouth of two or three. Mary's, Mary, his mother was one. Simeon was number two. And Anna was number three. Approximately 540 years. A young man walks into the temple. Take that back. We take 500 and approximately 540 years. A young teenager steps into the temple and is sitting down with the doctors and sitting down with the priest, marveling as his mother comes back in panic. <laughs> we, 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 we thought we lost you. You're the carpenter's son. You were thinking about the cross. No, woman. I'm about my father's business. And he wasn't at no carpenter's shop. Where was he? He was sitting at this temple. And then, 20 more years later, being 13, 20 more years later, guess what happens? He's led out of Jerusalem for the last time, bearing his cross. And 
the children of Israel, uh, verse 17. And offer the dedication to the house of God, 100 bullocks, 200 rams, 400 lambs, and for a sin offering for all Israel, 12 he goats according to the number of the tribes of Israel. No, it's not lamb, it's a goat. Abraham offered the goat, not Isaac. They're waiting for the precious lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And they set the priests in their divisions, and the Levites in their courses, courses, for the service of God which is at Jerusalem, as it is written in the book of Moses. They're obeying the word. And the children of the captivity kept the Passover upon the fourteenth day of the first month, like they're supposed to. For the priests and the Levites were purified together, all of them were pure, and killed the Passover for all the children of the captivity, and for their brethren the priests, and for themselves. The children of Israel, which were come again out of the captivity, they're not in the land. They're still children of the captivity. And all such as had separated themselves unto them for the filthiness of the heathen of the land to seek the Lord God of Israel to eat. They kept the feast of the Passover. Wait a minute. They keep the feast of unleavened bread seven days with joy. For the Lord had made them joyful and turned the heart of the king of Assyria unto them to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of God. And the God of Israel. The God taking care of the Jews. The temple's built. The Passover is, is over with. The feast of the unleavened bread is finished. And they're in joy. There's a problem going to come up. You know every time. When you get right in God. You stand up. The devil will take, give you a fall. But God used the heathen to take care of them and to help them. And God by saying unto another commandment, if it wasn't for those words, we would not have chapter 6. And if we did not have chapter 6, the temple would not have been finished. If the temple would not have been finished, there would have been no Passover. If there would have been no Passover. There would have been no Feast of Unleavened Bread. And there would have been no temple for Jesus Christ to walk in. God has it all taken care of. Even when you don't think he has it taken care of. He's got the thing set aside. He knows what's going to happen. And he moves people. He moves things to get his will to be done in our lives. Now our choices or somebody else's choices. He may have to redirect things. But God will get his will done. He wanted that temple finished. And he wanted it built. It. And it's done. Now they stopped for a while. What would have happened if they just kept on working and finished it earlier? We don't know. And there are times in our life we stop. And God has to send people in our lives say, well, you get back. You get back to business. You're wasting time. Don't stop what God wants you to do. Keep on building. We'll close there.